Program Director, Your Excellency, the Executive Mayor of the Garden Route District Municipality Council, and Memory Boyson, distinguished representatives from the University of Nelson Mandela, business, labor, civil society, and community based organizations, the chairperson of the Garden Route Environmental Forum, Dr. Nina Phil Yun, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to warmly greet each and every one of you gathered here today and also take this opportunity to congratulate the Garden Route Environmental Forum Secretariat for organizing this important event. The significance of your work in planning to build climate resilience here in the Southern Cape should not be underestimated. Climate change is no longer a distant reality. And all of us know that drought, severe wildfires, and more recently flooding are part of our lived experience. The sixth International Panel on Climate Change report indicates that the world has already warmed on average by 1.1 degrees above pre-industrial times. Here in Southern Africa, we are warming up at twice the global rate. Global warming is associated with extreme weather events that will adversely impact economies and livelihoods, as well as the security of essential resources such as food, water, and energy. Because South Africa is a mega biodiverse country, we will experience climate change impacts differently in different parts of the country. This means that we need to tailor make climate resilience plans, which will be different for each local area. Here in the Southern Cape, we are part of the Fainbos biome. So we already know that wildfires are a natural phenomena that will intensify as a result both of drought and the presence of alien forestry plantations. The Southern Cape with its beautiful beaches, rivers, estuaries and lagoons will also face storm surges and gradual sea level rise as the polar ice caps begin to melt. At a national level, the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment has made strides in developing our climate change adaptation architecture following the adoption in 2020 by Cabinet of the National Climate Change Adaptation Strategy. The Climate Change Bill once passed into law will ensure a legal framework is in place for integrating climate resilience planning and resourcing at all levels of government. Because climate impacts have local specificity, municipal governments are the frontline responders to the effects of climate change, and their actions will determine whether or not we have sustainable development pathways and whether we are helping local communities to understand the challenges that lie ahead and the importance for them to build climate resilience now. It is for this reason that the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment provides support to municipal officers on how to transit from planning to implementation. To assist, we have developed a range of easy to use tools, such as the Green Book, and the Let's Respond Toolkit, as well as the Municipal Climate Finance Training Manual. Because we are worried about the impact of sea level rise on coastal communities, we are focusing specifically on building the capacity of Western Cape municipalities to understand local vulnerability and to plan to build climate resilient infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, here on the Garden Route, my department has been working with the municipality to develop projects that will build early warning mechanisms to detect and manage wildfires as part of our climate change adaptation programs. We have also worked together with our sister Department of Tourism to develop a climate change risk and vulnerability assessment report. This report is helping us understand how climate change will impact on the tourism sector and how we can take early action to save jobs 
and value chains. Now, our department implements a wide variety of what we call the working for environmental programs that aim to rehabilitate and manage ecosystems vital to the health and well-being of people and nature. And it is these programs that will help the garden root and indeed <clears throat> the country's climate change resilience. Ladies and gentlemen, the importance of empowering local communities to understand how natural disasters will affect them in the future will definitely save lives and resources. Women and children living in conditions of poverty are the most vulnerable to climate change. However, social networks and state citizen partnerships can play an important role in building climate resilience within vulnerable communities. During the floods that hit KwaZulu-Natal in April last year, the locally based Enviro Champs, trained and supported by the city of Eteguini and the University of KwaZulu-Natal, successfully used the FUSE early warning system to evacuate residents from their homes in the Quarry West informal settlement. Thanks to the training, bravery and dedication of the EnviroChamps volunteers and the timely warnings they received from scientists who had established the FUSE micro disaster early warning system, not a single resident drowned as the Palmeet River washed away 440 homes in the early hours of the 12th of April, 2022. Sadly, the story in adjacent communities, not part of the significant partnership was very different. I want to take this opportunity to urge all of you here today to study this outstanding climate resilience partnership. It teaches us that vulnerable communities do not have to be powerless in the face of the climate emergency. It demonstrates the outstanding role scientific knowledge can play when it empowers community volunteers. It teaches us how local governments can save lives and resources by putting people first. Let me conclude by thanking the Garden Root Environmental Forum for its continuous support of the country's efforts to tackle climate change. This forum brings together scientists, local government practitioners, business, labor, and community to exchange ideas, build partnerships, and collaborative efforts across the community of the Southern Cape. Yours too is a model from which others can learn. I thank you.